Hi, I'm Pastor Cheryl Pickford. Welcome to the season of Advent, the four weeks preceding Christmas. And during this four weeks, I will be doing a four-part series called The Faces of Christmas. Now, just so you know, there'll be no reindeer in this series, no talking snowmen, no dancing elves, or that fat guy in the red suit. Instead, I'll be talking about four of the very important beings presented in Scripture concerning the birth of our Savior. We sing angels we have heard on high during the Christmas season and hark the herald angels sing, but odds are we give very little thought to these spirit beings the rest of the year. In the classic movie, It's a Wonderful Life, the angel Clarence is surprised when told that Nick, the bartender, didn't believe in angels. Do you? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you. Thank you for this message. Thank you for the fact that you have created angels, that you have spirit beings that act as your messengers who guide us and protect us. Lord, thank you for this Advent season as we can all prepare our hearts to welcome the birth of your Son and our Messiah, Jesus Christ. We give you all honor and praise, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, our first face of Christmas is the angel Gabriel. Angels have a key role in the birth of Jesus, from the announcement to Mary, the convincing of Joseph to proceed with the marriage, and to heavenly announcements to the shepherds in the fields. Now, only two angels are specifically named in the Bible, Michael and Gabriel, but there are many, many more who remained unnamed in Scripture. Today, we're going to take a look at Gabriel's role in the Christmas story, as well as Gabriel's role in Israel's history and the role of angels in general. Our text can be found in Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 35, and I'm reading right now from the New International Version. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, to a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How can this be, Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin? And the angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. The angel Gabriel appears to Mary when her own cousin Elizabeth is six months along in her own pregnancy. He announces the startling news that Mary will conceive and give birth to a son and will name him Jesus. Mary was chosen by God as the mother of Jesus. But the New Testament writers never indicate that she was to be worshipped, prayed to, or given special titles. She was chosen because she found favor with God. Her humble and godly life pleased God such that he chose her for this most important task. He sent his special messenger angel, Gabriel, to share this important news. Now Gabriel also appeared to the priest Zechariah as he was on duty and serving at the temple. Look at Luke chapter 1 verse 19. The angel answered, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I have been sent to speak to you and tell you this good news. Well, this good news, of course, was that Zachariah's wife, Elizabeth, would conceive and bear a son, which would be named John. Elizabeth was old and barren, so this was truly miraculous news. Well, we've seen Gabriel's role in the Christmas story. Now we'll look at his role in Israel's history. You see, Gabriel appeared not only to Zacharias and to Mary, but also 
to the prophet Daniel more than 500 years earlier. Each time that he appeared, he brought important messages from God. So turn to Daniel chapter 8, verses 15 through 18, and here I am reading from the Amplified Bible. When I, Daniel, had seen the vision, I sought to understand it. Then behold, standing before me was one who looked like a man. And I heard the voice of a man between the banks of the Uli, it's a river, which called out and said, Gabriel, give this man, Daniel, an understanding of the vision. So he came near where I was standing, and when he came, I was frightened and fell face downward. But he said to me, Understand, son of man, that the fulfillment of the vision pertains to the events that will occur in the end of the, in the time of the end. Verse 18. Now as he, this is Gabriel, was speaking to me, I drifted into a deep sleep or unconsciousness with my face to the ground. But he touched me and made me stand where I had stood before. He said, Behold, I'm going to let you know what will happen during the final time of the indignation and wrath of God upon the ungodly, for it concerns the appointed time of the end. See, Gabriel is God's messenger. He came to the prophet Daniel and instructed him about end times events. Flip down to Daniel 9. Chapter or Daniel chapter 9 verses 20 through 23. While I was still speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of the people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God in behalf of the whole wow let me start that over again while I was still speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God in behalf of the holy mountain of my God. While I was still speaking in prayer and extremely exhausted, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the earlier vision, came to me about the time of the evening sacrifice. He instructed me and he talked with me and he said, Oh, Daniel, I have now come to give you insight and wisdom and understanding. At the beginning of your supplications, the command to give you an answer was issued, and I have come to tell you, for you are highly regarded and greatly beloved. Therefore, consider the message and begin to understand the meaning of the vision. Well, here the angel Gabriel was revealing Israel's future. Only God can reveal future events so clearly. God's work not only deals with the sweeping panorama of history, but it also focuses on the intricate details of people's lives. And his plans, whether for nations or for individuals, are unshakable. Look at Daniel 10, verses 12 through 21. Then he, Gabriel, said to me, Do not be afraid, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart on understanding this and on humbling yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia was standing in opposition to me for twenty-one days. Then behold, Michael, one of the chief of the celestial princes, came to help me, for I had been left there with the kings of Persia. Now I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision is in regard to the days yet to come. When he had spoken to me according to these words, I turned my face toward the ground and was speechless. And behold, one who resembled the sons of men touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and, be and spoke and said to him who was standing before me, O oh my Lord, because of this vision, anguish has come upon me, and I have retained no strength. For how can such a weakened servant of my Lord talk with such a being as my Lord? For now there remains no strength in me, nor has any breath been left in me. Then the one, Gabriel, whose appearance was like that of a man, touched me again, and he strengthened me. He said, O oh man, highly regarded and greatly beloved, do not be afraid. Peace be to you. Take courage and be strong. Now when he had spoken to me, I was strengthened. And I said, Let my Lord speak, for you have strengthened me. 
Then he said, Do you understand fully why I came to you? Now I shall return to fight against the hostile prince of Persia. And when I have gone, behold, the prince of Greece is about to come. But I, Gabriel, will tell you what is inscribed in the writing of truth. There is no one who stands firmly with me and strengthens himself against these hostile spirit forces except Michael, your prince, the guardian of your nation. Did you know that there are offices inside the angelic realm, both on God's side and on the devil's side? When Satan, who was once a beautiful, powerful angel, rebelled against God, he took one-third of the angels with him. He continues to plot against God and his followers, and, and the angels who followed him are now demonic forces. Cities and principalities have angels assigned to watch over them. The angel prince of Persia and Greece are demonic forces. The angel Michael is the guardian over Israel and fights against evil. There are angelic forces assigned over your municipality as well. Some, I believe, who are demonic forces. They help influence people and drive political decisions that are against God's standard of holiness allowing states to legalize actions that God calls sin and abomination. There is a real battle happening in the spirit realm, but we, we live our lives unaware. Historians record past events and interpret them for today. Newspapers and magazines record today's events, but only God can write the book of the future because only God knows the future. When a messenger comes from God with a word about the future, listen carefully. And although God sent the angel Gabriel to Daniel, powerful obstacles detained the messenger for three weeks, as referenced in verse 13. Daniel continued to pray faithfully and fast, and, and God's messenger eventually arrived. Answers to our prayers may be hindered by unseen obstacles as well. Don't expect God's answers to come too easily or too quickly. Your prayer may be challenged by evil forces, so pray fervently and pray earnestly. Then expect God to answer in his good timing. So we've looked at Gabriel's role in the Christmas story and his role in Israel's history. Now we will look at the role of angels in general. Now, despite what Hollywood teaches through the movies and television shows, angels are not the souls of departed people. When your loved one dies, they do not become an angel watching over you. Angels are spirit beings created by God who help carry out his work on earth. They bring God's messages to people. They protect God's people. They offer encouragement they give guidance, they carry out punishment, they patrol the earth, and fight the forces of evil. Now, there are good and bad angels, but because bad angels are allied with the devil or Satan, they have considerably less power and authority than good angels. Eventually, the main role of angels will be to offer continuous praise to God. Now, this is Jesus speaking in Matthew 18, verse 10, and I'm reading from the Living Bible. Jesus said, Beware that you don't look down upon a single one of these little children. For I tell you that in heaven, their angels have constant access to my Father. Yeah, angels are also special guardians. Certain angels are assigned to watch over children, and they have direct access to God. Jesus' words ring out sharply in a culture where children are taken lightly, ignored, or sadly aborted. If their angels have constant access to God, the least we can do is to allow children to approach us easily in spite of our far too busy schedules. These little ones matter to God from the moment of their conception. We should all remember that th we should all remember this despite our culture's sinful abortion on demand laws. Well, have you personally ever seen an angel? I have not, but I know someone who has. 
My friend was up early one morning reading her Bible and praying when a very tall, angelic being appeared in her living room. Well, naturally, she was terrified. Have you noticed that when angels are recorded, all angels are recorded as saying, don't be afraid when they show up? Yeah, fear is our normal response to these supernatural beings. Now she was told to prepare herself for a difficult trial in her ministry, home, and family. She was to stand firm and not be faint. And true to the angel's words, the next two years brought difficult, unimagined trials. But she stood firm, and now God has expanded her influence and her ministry. Abraham, Moses, Joshua, Jeremiah, Daniel, Zacharias, Mary, the shepherds, Peter, Paul, and John are all recorded in Scripture as having had angelic encounters. I believe that God sends angels to protect us, deliver his messages, and work in supernatural ways still today. I once read an account from a woman who was convinced that she encountered angels. She was living in New York City and she had to cut through Central Park to get home from work. Well, one night she had to work late and she was nervous about taking this shortcut through the park as a rapist was operating in the woods. He had already attacked and raped a number of women and had not been apprehended. She nervously decided to go home her usual way and hurried along the path. She was passed by a man wearing a dark hooded sweatshirt. He walked past her, but he didn't attack her. Later, the same man attacked a different woman along the same path that she had traveled. When the news hit that a woman had been attacked in the park, she recognized the description given as the man who had walked past her and went to the police. The rapist was apprehended, and he told the police that he had thought about attacking her, but the two big Doberman dogs walking alongside her made him change his mind. She was walking alone. She didn't have two big Doberman dogs walking with her, but she is convinced that God sent angels to protect her, which appeared to the rapist as these two big vicious dogs. You know, many of us have unexplained encounters that just don't make sense in the natural. I believe there are angels among us carrying out their assignments from God. When my daughter was three or four years old, we installed a privacy fence in our backyard. I remember her playing near where the big heavy gate of the fence was leaning as it had not yet been installed. Suddenly a strong gust of wind caught that gate and it blew it down, exactly where she was playing, crouched on the ground with her back to the fence. It was so big and heavy, it could have killed her. I stood helpless too far away to save her, and I remember crying out to God. As the heavy gate was falling, something scooped her up and moved her out of the line of danger, almost as if a big invisible hand caught her up and tossed her out of the path of the gate. She wasn't set down very gently and was crying from her surprise landing. I was crying too, in relief and gratitude to God for saving her. I will always believe that it was an angelic encounter that saved her from being hit by that big heavy gate. My friends, the spirit realm is very real. Angels are among us and Gabriel was given God's important message to us in the Christmas story. As you're decorating your home for Christmas and you place an angel tree topper on your Christmas tree, take a moment to reflect on the angels among us. If we could roll back the curtain between our physical world and the spiritual world, I'm sure we would be surprised to see so many of God's warrior angels around us, protecting us and guiding us. Thank you, God, for angels. Thank you for sending them to earth to intervene on our behalf and to protect us from the evil one. Join me next time when I will be taking a look at Mary in this Faces of Christmas series. May God bless you mightily. 
until we meet again.